Do you have any insight regarding the antibody-resistant COVID mink mutation in Denmark? Uh, 12 plus people are sick and much of the country is locked down. Yeah. Oh man, I, I, I know of it is barely, is, is about all. Um, boy, early on there is thought of zoonotic um, evolution. I guess that's not, it's not zoonotic. Zoonotic would just be transmission, but, um, well, maybe it is. Um, but jumping back and forth and then back again, uh, with something else that I can't remember what, um, but the, but the, it's, it's clearly happening in the minks. Um, oh, I guess it was, it's, it's been seen in some cats, some house cats, but hasn't been observed hasn't to go back. back. Yeah. Hasn't jumped Same back. Same with dogs. Same with dogs. Right. So are some domesticates, and I guess these minks are farmed. So these yes. are effectively domesticates as well. Otherwise, how would yeah, we know? Here's the how frightening know? thing. And I, I should have looked into this. I didn't know the question was going to come up. Yeah. One of the, back in the early days of COVID where we were discussing lab leak hypothesis. That was this year. That was very recently. Um, but still the early days. Back mm -hmm. in the day, mm -hmm. we used to discuss the lab leak hypothesis and the serial passage experiments that likely took place in the lab in presumably uh, training the virus to be a better model for whatever the study was that was going on. If this was a lab leak, that's right. the best explanation is that somebody was building a virus that would be good for studying something like how to create vaccines, maybe vaccines that covered more than one mm -hmm. uh, emergent coronavirus. Yep. But anyway, <clears throat> one of the questions was, and I've now forgotten exactly why this question came up, but one of the questions was, could one of these serial passage experiments have been in, and I think it was Mustelids, it may or may not have been minks, it may have been ferrets, mm. I don't remember. Um, but the question was, did somebody infect a colony of Mustelids, that is weasels, um, and serially passage the virus between them because I think it was that Mustelids had... I can't remember, was it a spike protein that was a good model for humans, or I don't know. I don't remember. But, uh, but in any case, if it was the case that this is a lab leak, and if the lab in question serially passaged it through mustelids, then it would be Which highly likely are, yeah. that it would inf yeah. infect mustelids that came into contact with people, like where? Like a mink farm. Yeah. And it would not be surprising that it would then be able to go the other way, because it may already have gone the other way. Yeah. Right? And so, um, so anyway. that's, that's, a, that's two ifs at the beginning of that. Um, but, uh, you know, absent that it's hard to say because this is actually one part of that is something that we spent a lot of time talking about and you spent even more time than I did, um, early on when we were talking a lot about COVID, the idea that this was an unintentional lab leak from, uh, research into the virus seems, um, really very, very likely to both of us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a not very big if in our heads. And then the bigger if just, you know, in, in part for me, because I just don't, I don't remember the evidence for or against is were they doing serial passage experiments? Almost certainly yes, if it was lab, but yep. were they doing serial passage experiments with mink or with mustelids? And if mustelids, then um, expecting this to be able to be bobbing back and forth between minks and humans is not unexpected. Right. That's the thing. If this was a lab leak, which seems highly likely, yeah. then the only really iffy question in here is did, did the serial, you know, almost certainly serial passage experiments would have been part of this. Mm -hmm. In fact, they would almost have to be in order for the evidence that this is a lab leak uh, to be accurate. Yeah. Right. Um, but the only weak link in the chain is where Mustelid's involved. And um, I, again, this is, you know, people say, well, why do you need to know? We've got the virus now. Let's fight it. No, this is why you need to know. Exactly. Right? This is exactly why you need to know is that the uh, tissue level promiscuity of the virus and the ability to jump between species are things that would surely have been altered by such experiments. So we need to know what they were. There's just, uh, it, it's actually the rare thing about the epidemiology of this virus that would have no, that, that would hinge in no way on what the origin of the virus was. Uh, and that's not to say that we can point to exactly what the effects would be or why, um, but the idea that it doesn't matter now, let's just, let's just fight the thing. It's like, 
we need to know what thing it is that we're fighting. Yeah. Actually. We have to, 100%. Yeah. 